Hello, it's Damien. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm a sucker for a honest and business savvy person who wants to use techniques and skills and practices of remote viewing to assist them in getting to where they want to go. And uh, I've been in communication with somebody here recently who I thought that brought up a very good question and one that may be relevant to other people out there who find taking exams and tests and being prepared for what's to come is valuable, but how do you use remote viewing to give you that edge on the test or the exam to help further your career? And for me, I initially kind of blew this person off and said, you know what, it's probably easier just to study for the exam through work and willpower alone. You don't necessarily have to use magic for test taking, you know, and uh, received a response. Okay, that's great. But is there, uh, is there any way that it can be done? And, and of course I responded and said, absolutely it can be done. Sure, everything can be done. Anything can be done. It's just finding the right combination and the right key to influence the situation to such an extent to where it is harmonious with the environment or it doesn't harm the environment. And this can be done. Of course, you can do it other ways too. You can also use brute force. So I'm going to discuss brute force and how you can use remote viewing to structure a pattern and a design to derive answers that will generally lead you in the correct column more often than it will lead you in the incorrect column, which is, you know, it's good enough to talk about, right? And I initially described this grid pattern if it was a four uh, it was like an A, B, C, or D type of test where you fill in the blanks. I uh, recommended a four-part grid pattern that you structure A, B, C, and D in. And I want to go more detail to answer the question of how this can be done. But it needs to be in a conceptual framework that everything has a purpose and everything is of a specific design and there are no coincidences. Everything is there for a reason. And you have to have this premise in order to position your chart to derive the right answer. And this is why you use brute force because you overwhelm the question by deriving the answer with more energy than is necessary with more energy than the question initially conjures. So this is a way to actually be extreme in your force to find the correct answer. This is why you get answers correct more often than not in this sense. And here's how it works. Letters actually have masculine and feminine properties to them. And you can tell by the shape of the letter as well as the number in which they represent. So even numbers in the English alphabet are feminine. Odd numbers are masculine. Why that's important is that if you want to associate a color to it as well, to add an extra layer of accuracy in your deriving your remote viewing answer, is that the masculine letters, like A, for example, or C, which have straight edges if you write them out, those would be red. And the feminine, in this case, would be the B and the D would be feminine and blue. 
Now, why this part is important is because when you're going to read the question that you have an A, B, C, or D answer to, you're going to try and find the flavor and feeling of that question. Is it a feminine question or is it a masculine question? If it's a feminine question, it's generally asking for a solution or something that's a whole or what I would call in mathematics, if you want to add, you know, for the, uh, the scientific minded out there, if it is actually pi, right? An infinite value, creation itself, the feminine nature. Or is it has a, a more of a descriptive and definitive, it's looking for a more, more descriptive and definitive answer, which would make it more masculine, which what I would, in mathematical parlance, would be the Fibonacci, right? Where it multiplies. And, and how the number system works there, too, just to kind of give you an idea. And, and I'm, gonna, I'm trying to explain all this because you also learn this in the hypertext school. But I find this to be very, very valuable to help you on, on the different things that you can do. So, the Fibonacci. How that works is that's to multiply. The other one is to be fruitful. The feminine is to be fruitful. The masculine is to multiply. So in, in numerology, it would be, the feminine would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And so on. But in the masculine, it would be uh, 0, 1, so one plus zero is one. So it'd be another one. And then one plus one is two. And then two plus one is three. And then three plus two is five, right? And then the Fibonacci, so it multiplies. And this is important because this will tell you, you can, you can eliminate several of the, of A, B, C, or D questions by knowing that the, they're looking for a masculine answer or a feminine answer. So if there's only one masculine answer, <laughs> you can, you know, you generally uh, can focus your energy on that one first, and you can get tests done faster that way, by the way. This is another ancillary benefit to learning this, is because you can just eliminate a lot of the answers without har hardly reading them sometimes. But I, would, I wouldn't recommend doing that in the beginning. But th these, these little tricks will help you. And you can take a test really fast, and people will be like, what the, how, how, is he, how is that person done already? It's because it's, it's, it's the way this, the test is designed. So, I just wanted to share those kind of concepts with you. Use a four-part grid system. You can start with the masculine feminine energies. Then you can start with the, num the numerology behind it. And then you can look for the flavor of the test question itself. And that will tell you if they're looking for a, uh, a solution, if they're looking for a solution, it's generally on the feminine water side. If they're looking for structure or a form as the answer to the question, you can generally think that's the body and that's also feminine. So you're looking for something that encompasses a form. If you feel that the question is more pointing you in the direction of, say, uh, a description, right? then I would say that would be masculine and it's probably like in the A category. You know, I would look for, I would look for the associations there. And then, um, and lastly, oh, and that would be air, right? If it's more of a description. And if it's multiples, if there's multiples involved with the answer, like they're not looking for something singular, which would be the feminine, looking for something masculine, which is the multiples, and has multiple answers, like the army instead of, the building, right? The building would be more feminine generally because it's singular in this case. So I want to share those things with you, help you with your, your path. If you want to learn more, if you want to you know, go deeper, uh, the Hypertech School is officially open and you can go to my website and look it up and you can send me emails and I'll be happy to talk to you and stuff too. So thank you very much everybody for listening. I hope that helps you. Y'all have a great day. Thanks. Cheers.